Hey friends, good afternoon to you. Um, we're continuing our next study. We're continuing John chapter 2. We're uh, going to be looking at the scripture passage of John chapter 2 verses 13 through 25. And this will conclude this chapter. And what I'll try to do is in the next few weeks to... Uh, try to move through uh, the Gospel of John quickly but not go too fast and we'll cover most of the story sections um, you know like the parables and so forth if you understand what I'm talking about today um, we'll be talking about the cleansing of the temple and what authority uh, Jesus Christ does these things so um, word of wisdom from uh, our Heavenly Father. I'll be reading from God's Word translation again. Um, it's one of my favorite translations. It's very simplified. Um, so here we go. Verse 13. The Jewish Passover was near, so Jesus went to Jerusalem. He found those who were selling cattle, sheep, and pigeons in the temple courtyard. He also found money changers sitting there. He made a whip from small ropes and threw everyone with their sheep and cattle out of the temple courtyard. He dumped the money changers' coins and knocked over their tables. He, to he told those who sold pigeons, pick up this stuff and get it out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that the scriptures said, Devotion for your house will consume me. The Jews reacted by asking Jesus, What miracle can you show us to justify what you are doing? Jesus replied, Tear down this temple and I will, I will rebuild it in three days. The Jews said it took 46 years to build this temple. Do you really think you're going to rebuild it in three days but the temple Jesus spoke about was his own body after he came back to life his disciples remembered that he had said this so they believed the scripture and this statement that Jesus had made while Jesus was Jerusalem at the Passover festival many people believed in him because they saw the miracles that he performed Jesus however was wary of these believers he understood people and didn't need anyone to tell him about human nature he knew what people were really like okay let's go back to verse 13 the Jewish temp the Jewish Passover was near so Jesus went to Jerusalem so you know the Jews um, uh, sometime between March and April um, uh, they celebrate the Passover and um, it's very close to our Resurrection Sunday I don't like calling it Easter because Easter comes from the name Ishtar, which is a fertil fertility goddess, so I like to call it Resurrection Sunday because Jesus rose from the dead and it sounds better, so that's how I'm going to call it from now on. Um, the Christian celebration of Jesus' resurrection, I'm going to call it Resurrection Sunday. Um, so, um, the Jews celebrate Passover every year. It's to remind them that um, about their time in Egypt, the captivity and suffering that they had faced, with, they had suffered there. Um, he found those who were selling cattle, sheep, pigeons in the temple courtyard. He also found money changers sitting there. Um, now Annas and Caiaphas um, basically were the ones in charge of all this and um, um, 
I don't know really what to say about these two men. Most likely they had hard hearts and Jesus knew this. Um, because they would be in charge of all the, the, how the money was changed and, you know, you had to buy one of their cows and sheep and stuff. And a lot of people during that age, let alone in our own time, you know, they can't afford to buy certain stuff and things get more expensive as corrupt officials, I'm going to call it, put it that way. Um, you know, they want more money and so to become more co corrupt and, and to get more money they gotta jack prices up so they can make common people like myself and you suffer. So, you know, here they're doing bad bi business practices, what I like to call it, and this really angered Jesus because this was his father's house and they were treating it like um, um, a place where he sell merchandise. He made a whip from small ropes and threw everyone with their sheep and cattle out of the temple courtyard. He dumped the money changers coins and knocked over their tables. He told those who sold pigeons, pick up this stuff and get it out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. You know, Jesus was very passionate about his father's house, and, uh, including us Christians today. You know, Jesus will let us know when we're mistreating our bodies um if it's food if it's some type of immorality um believe me we're all guilty one way or another um but we can always ask forgiveness you know that's the one thing that we need to remember you know so um jesus has the authority to to do things like this you know and that's why Jesus was sent. This is what I call righteous anger. See, he he was angry, but he didn't sin because he was protecting his heavenly Father's interests. Okay, um, his disciples remembered the scripture said, "Devotion for your house will consume me," and that's quoting from the Old Testament or the Hebrew scriptures which, are, which is called the Tanakh. Verse 18, the Jews reacted by asking Jesus, what miracle can you show us to justify what you're doing? Um, some translations will say, by what authority can, can you prove to us to justify what you're doing, basically. And this is they don't get an answer what they're expecting from Jesus. They get something entirely different. Jesus replied, tear down this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. That's not what they were expecting. The Jews said, it took 46 years to build this temple. Do you really think you're going to rebuild it in three days? See, the, see, they're thinking about the literal, but Jesus is thinking about the spiritual. Okay, this is, in this gospel, this is the first prediction Jesus makes about his own death and resurrection. And he doesn't physically, well, this is the second time that, you know, he indirect, indirectly predicts his own death. Um, the first time was at the wedding in Cana, um, last video, um, we heard him say, you know, what is the concern you or me? My, t my hour has not yet come. And so in this video, in this passage, you know, you know, he's talking that he will be put to death and he will rise as predicted here. Uh, but the Jewish, the Jewish leadership, they didn't understand. You know, their hearts were hard, so I doubt they would understand, at least most of them. But the temple Jesus spoke about was his own body. 
After he came back to life, his disciples remem remembered that he had said this, so they believed the scripture and the statement that Jesus had made. Um, you're going to find out later on as we continue the study that even his disciples didn't understand a lot of things and Jesus would simply say, how long do I have to be patient with you? You know, you know, when Jesus speaks something, sometimes it, he speaks it so plainly, but yet we can't understand what he is saying. Sometimes it will take lots of prayer and rereading the passage several times for us to get what he's really trying to tell us. I mean, remember, Jesus speaks the truth, and he is truth. So, um... In verse 23, while Jesus was in Jerusalem at the Passover festival, many people believed in him because they saw the miracles that he performed. You know, there might have been all the miracles that he performed while um, he was there. The Apostle John doesn't mention it here, but doesn't, I don't know what these other miracles could be. Um, however, Jesus was wary of these believers. He understood people. See, Jesus knows their hearts. He can read minds. He's Almighty God. He's not a created being. You're going to hear me say this a lot of times through these videos. He is not a created being because a created being cannot die for the sins of the world. Only God Almighty, Yahweh El Shaddai, can die for the sins of the world. Okay? Remember that. Um, first... Let me see, verse 23, Jesus was in Jerusalem. Let's see, um, verse 25, and didn't need anyone to tell him about human nature. He knew what people were really like. See, this verse, verse 25, really says it all. Jesus helped created mankind and every living creature here on earth. Um, and so he knows what human nature is like because he helped create man because if God didn't create man Jesus couldn't be sent to earth to die for man so it was important for God to create man in his own image so eventually God could send his son to redeem man I know it sounds hard to grasp but uh, Jesus is the word he is the light he is the life he is the truth and he is the Passover sacrifice. He is the final sacrifice. There will be no more sacrifices ever. And that's why the temple was destroyed in AD 70. Because the price had already been paid. The, the official sacrifice had been paid. And no more sacrifices are needed. Um, if this video has blessed you, um, send a comment. Um, if you have suggestions, comments, uh, prayer requests, um, anything of that nature, you can leave it in the video, the box below. Uh, remember, um, all comments are needs to be approved. Um, to that way, I can weed out the bad comments. Um, remember, I'm just you know telling you God's word. You know, I'm not going to distort it. I'm not going to water it down. I'm going to tell you how it is. So have a good day and I will see you tomorrow.